and praise lifts us into the presence of Almighty God. Yeah. And that's why it should be the same atmosphere in which we live and move and have our yeah. beings. That's why God is calling us to a highest place of praise. Yeah. But not only that, he commands everything to praise him, but he demands it with a grateful attitude. Even before we come into his presence. Yeah. Hello, somebody. And I come to tell somebody that you got to learn to praise God. No matter what problems that you're going through. No matter what situation that you're going through. You got to learn to give God praise. Because praise is your weapon against your enemy. But not only that, the, the psalmist tells us to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Right. But he commands us to serve the Lord with gladness. Yeah, yeah. And so that brings me to the next point of this message. Yeah. You see, we are commanded to shout. And now we're being commanded to serve. Oh, yeah. Hello, somebody. He tells us to serve the Lord with gladness. Yeah. You see, in order to serve something, one must give render service unto. Yeah. You see, serve means to comply with the commands of someone in a higher position. In order to serve something, serve is, is an act of obedience. Hello, somebody. You see, God, he isn't a king who forces his people to serve him. But you got to worship God with a grateful heart, knowing that he's a grateful God. You see, the word worship comes from the word worth. It simply means what we are worth to God and what God is worth to to us. I want you to know that we have been created for worship. But not only was we created for worship, but our worship must be pure and holy. For the Bible says, give unto the Lord the glory that is due unto his name. And the Bible says, worship the Lord in the beautiness of holiness. Yes, we see that worship simply means practicing the very presence of God in everything that we do. I want you to know that worship simply means romancing God. Hello, somebody. Yeah, we have to romance God in our worship because worship consists on a relationship. You see, whenever you come into a kingdom where a king rules, you just can't come any old kind of way. But you have to come bowing down, giving respect into the presence of a king. Yes, whenever you come into the presence of a king, you got to have a right attitude. Hello, somebody. But notice that you don't come before the king just standing around empty. But the psalmist reminds us that we got to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Hello, somebody. You see, you got to have the right melody in your heart. And you got to have the right tune in your spirit. If you expect to be a true worshiper. You see, you cannot be like the woman that was at the well. Who had came and, and questioned Jesus. And Jesus told this woman, he said, the time is coming. When there will no longer be concerned about where we worship. But who we worship. Oh, yeah. He says, but because the hour is coming, uh -huh. he says, now when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit yeah. and in truth. Yeah. And so that brings me to the next point. Yeah. After we have been shouting, yeah. after we have served, yeah. now we find out he's commanding us to conceive. Yeah. You see, in order to conceive something, <laughs> one must know you see, the word conceive simply means to be pregnant with. Yeah. In other words, we got to become pregnant with an understanding of knowing who God is. And so that brings me to the next point. You see, when the psalmist says, know that the Lord, he is God. And it is he that has made us and that we ourselves. You see, in order to know something, one must conceive it in his heart. Yes, you see, to know means to regard as the truth beyond the shadows of a doubt. To know a thing simply means to practice the very practice of it with an experience to back it up. Yes, you see, if you want to know the taste of an apple, one must change the apple by eating it yourself. Yes, and if you want to know the methods and the theories of God, I want you to know that you've got to take part of God yourself. Because knowledge always originates with direct experience. You see, people of God, you got to have an experience with God. We're reminded of David who knew what it meant to have an experience with God. That's why David said that I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises 
shout to 